In no era in human history has the means for welfare and happiness and peace of mind been attained so closely like they have today. Never have the complex mysteries of this world and the ability of man to subdue and to control the unfriendly elements of nature been attained like they have been attained today. Central heating, air conditioning, online shopping, open heart and laser eye surgery and the list continues. Yet despite all of these staggering achievements and discoveries and advancements in the field of science and technology, never has the goal of a happy and pleasant life drifted further away like it has today. In a report that was published by The Guardian in 2016, it stated that the UK or in England alone, the number of antidepressants that had been issued had doubled in almost a single decade. They quoted around 61 million antidepressants being sold and issued outside of hospitals in the year 2015. In another report that was published by the BBC, the UNICEF have stated that now New Zealand, a country where when you say the name New Zealand, the first couple of words that come to our mind is beauty and scenery and clean air and endless land. They are stating that New Zealand is really struggling with very, very high rates of suicide and depression and now New Zealand has become number one in the developed world for the rates of suicide amidst the youth. Something is clearly very wrong. The 21st century has taught us how to fly in the sky like a bird and how to dive deep into the ocean like a fish. But how to walk on the face of the earth as a happy and content human being, a lot of us are still struggling with this one. Yet when this individual sits with himself, sits with herself, tries to pinpoint the problem, why am I sad? Why am I miserable? Why is my depression so long lasting? That person sits with himself and they find themselves at times unable to pinpoint the problem. Now dear brothers and sisters, allow me to shift your attention to the life of a Muslim. A mentality that Allah Almighty has gifted us with that keeps us smiling 24 hours a day. Even in some of the most difficult and tricky of circumstances, we have the tools, we have the ability. Allah has given us the mechanisms to keep us happy, to keep us smiling in all of the circumstances. Come with me now, dear brothers and sisters, and consider the situation of a person whose cash is a little bit low this person is still able to remain happy. Why? Because he reads in the book of Allah where Allah Almighty says, there isn't a moving creature on the face of the earth except that it is upon Allah to provide for it. He remains happy. When this Muslim finds himself feeling degraded, others are trying to debase him, humiliate him, to embarrass him, the Muslim is able to remain happy. And that is because he reads in the book of Allah where Allah Almighty says, all dignity belongs to Allah and to the messenger and to the believers as well. He remains happy. When the Muslim finds himself afraid, he's scared, others are threatening him, they are putting his life in danger, he is able to remain happy. And that is because he reads in the book of Allah where Allah says, Is Allah not enough for his servant? Ya Allah. Is Allah not enough for his servant? When the Muslim finds himself alone, isolated, without companionship, deserted, he is able to remain happy. 
And that is because he reads in the Quran where Allah Almighty says, don't be sad, Allah is with us. And he reads in the book of Allah where he says, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor does he hate you. Allahu Akbar. When a Muslim finds himself unable to express his problems, there isn't anybody who wants to hear his issues. Nobody understands his or her dilemma. The Muslim is able to remain happy. And that is because he reads in the Quran where Allah Almighty says, I only complain of my sorrow and my grief to Allah. When a Muslim finds himself meeting a huge hardship, a back-breaking difficulty, he is able to remain happy because he reads in the Quran, with hardship comes ease. With hardship comes ease. Allahu Akbar, dear brothers and sisters. How blessed we are. How gifted we are. Allah has given us a mentality I think a lot of us perhaps take for granted. A mentality that we as Muslims wish to introduce to the whole world. A win-win situation for the believer. As the Messenger وسلم, said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ المؤمن. How strange is the affair of a believer. He says, because everything that happens to him in life is good for him. He says, because if this person is touched with goodness, he shows Allah gratitude and that ends up being good for him. And if he is touched with difficulty, he shows patience and that ends up being good for him. Ya Allah. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, if somebody asks us to summarize the happy and the blissful life of a Muslim, respond with one sentence and say, the life of a Muslim is gratitude during times of ease and patience during times of difficulty and paradise in the end. Ya Allah. Tools for happiness that Allah has gifted us with. Tools that we take for granted. Tools that we must introduce to the world and introduce to ourselves as well. Content with the decree of Allah. Belief in predestiny is one of the cornerstones of happiness and without it happiness cannot be attained. Thus the Muslim is always saying Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Even when a calamity befalls him, he says Alhamdulillah in all circumstances. What have we been taught to say in the morning when we wake up? The very first words that come out of our mouths. All praise and thanks are due to Allah who gave us life after we were dead. What about later that evening when we fall asleep? What have we been taught to say? Alhamdulillah, all thanks and praise is due to Allah who has given us food and given us drink and given us enough and given us refuge. Always saying Alhamdulillah, always happy. What about when we find ourselves putting on a new set of clothes? What have we been taught to say? Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, thanks and praise belongs to you. You dressed me with this, you clothed me with this. Ya salam. What about when a Muslim comes out of a bathroom? All praise and thanks belongs to Allah, who has removed harm from me and he has given me well-being. What about when a Muslim sees a person with a disability? All praise and thanks are due to Allah, who has saved me from what he has trialed you with. What about when a Muslim achieves a matter that he wanted to accomplish? Alhamdulillah, he achieves it. What do we say? Alhamdulillah. All praise and thanks are due to Allah, whom by his favor all good things come to pass. What about when you fail to accomplish something? A matter that you really wanted, but it slips out of reach. What do we say? Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. All praise and thanks are due to Allah in all circumstances. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the life of a Muslim. Thanks during times of ease and, and patience, during times of difficulty, these are one of the cornerstones and the secrets to happiness. What about the situation of a person who does not think like this? What about an individual whom Allah Almighty has not blessed with this beautiful mentality? How do they cope? They cannot cope. Pain becomes unbearable. Calamities become intolerable. Life as we know it today for them becomes like salty water of the sea that they are drinking, a, a thirst that never quenches, hunger that never fills. This person finds himself shifting from one sin to another, one haram 
to another, one pornographic video to another, one bed to another, one drug to another, one intoxicant to another, desperately trying to pursue happiness. All he ever ends up finding is a short-term buzz which brings with it long-term sadness. He tries to find this secret ingredient called peace of mind, an ability to sleep at night, happiness, where is it? He tries to find it in sin, in haram, in images, in sounds, in feelings. He cannot find it. And with the passage of time, he realizes that his chest is only becoming tighter. And the darkness in his life is only becoming darker. This is the situation of sins, dear brothers and sisters. We have gaps, we have holes, we have voids in our hearts. And we want to fill them to become happy. But shaitan, he tries to convince us that filling those gaps is through sin, through haram. But that is impossible. And that is why Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says in some of the most beautiful of words that a person could come across. He said, speaking about those gaps, those cracks that we have in our human hearts, and how they are to be filled, how they are to be sealed, how happiness is to be attained. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says, he says in the heart of every human being, there is a sense of scattering that can only be brought together by turning to Allah. And in the heart of every human being, there is a sense of loneliness that can only be removed by being close to Allah. And in the heart of every human being is fear and anxiety that can only be put out by running to Allah. And in the heart of every human being is a sense of regret that can only be removed by being content with Allah. These gaps, dear brothers and sisters, that you and I feel in our hearts at times, they cannot be filled with sin, with haram, with an impermissible desire. Abadan, not at all. Rather, what they will do is widen the gap and make the crack even more severe and it becomes a downward spiral till the angel of death visits us. Happiness is not there. And I bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters, three analogies. One pertaining to food, one pertaining to wealth, and one pertaining to relationships. Tell me, dear brother, dear sister, which of the two is happier? Is it he who eats to his fill and drinks to his fill from the halal or the haram during Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, eats and drinks carelessly, without an ambition, without a goal, without accountability? Is this person happy? Or is it the righteous Muslim like yourself who fasts during the month of Ramadan? Who fasted the day of Arafah? Who fasts patiently Mondays and Thursdays throughout the year, waiting for the sun to set? To then place a date in his mouth and to experience a joy and a sensation that no poet on earth could describe having felt that he has now drawn one step closer to Allah and he has achieved something great by fasting that day. Which of the two is happier? Which of the two is happier, dear brother, dear sister? Is it a person who looks to make an earning, finances, from any avenue? Halal or haram? Through cigarettes, through interest, through alcohol, through drugs, money at any expense. Is this person happy? To then feed himself and feed his spouse and feed his children the flames of fire of Jahannam. Is this person happy? To then give out a sadaqah, to give out a charity to a masjid, to issue his zakah whilst knowing in his heart that Allah has no interest in this money because Allah is pure. And he only accepts that which is pure. Is that man happy? Even if he is a millionaire, is he happy? Or is it the righteous Muslim like yourself? Who looks to make an earning even if the money is a little bit less. But his heart is at peace. His heart is so content because he knows he's putting purity and the halal in his mouth and the mouth of his children. And he knows when he gives his sadaqah and he issues his zakah, Allah has an interest in it because Allah is pure and he only accepts that which is pure. 
And then if he wishes to sponsor an orphan, the orphan says to this man, Jazakallah khair, may Allah reward you. You are like my father. You, my sister, are like my mother. To then experience a happiness and submissiveness to Allah that nobody can describe. I ask you, dear brother, dear sister, which of the two is happier? Which of the two is happier? Is it a man who seeks to fulfill his desire for the opposite gender at any avenue possible? Alternating from woman to woman, from man to man, from bed to bed. Seeking to fill that gap that we have spoken about. To spend moments of intimacy with that individual in haram, which are followed by guilt and pain. And if somebody knocks at their door when they are together that evening, they both jump up in fear because they know what they are doing does not please their creator. And should she become pregnant because of that evening, the matter becomes more complicated. Should she choose to kill, to abort that child, the matter becomes more complicated. Are they happy? Or is it that righteous Muslim like yourself who is patient? Who waits? Distancing himself from the haram. Till that righteous woman, that righteous man comes knocking on the door. To then participate in a public wedding that everyone knows about. To then spend an evening of purity and pleasure in the halal, knowing that you are pleasing Allah and pleasing your spouse. And should somebody knock at the door during that moment, you don't mind because you are not doing anything wrong. And should she become pregnant that evening, alhamdulillah, it is gifts and happiness and aqiqah and dua and barakah and invitations. Which of the two is happy? With this short study of ours, dear brothers and sisters, we have just uncovered something very profound. We have just discovered something very great. We have just discovered that the underlying secret behind happiness and peace of mind and contentment is found at the doorstep of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is found in knowing Him, singling Him out in worship, doing good deeds and staying as far as you can from those tempting prohibitions and the aspects of haram. This is where happiness is found. Imam ibn Taymiyyah, he would say, whoever is looking for eternal happiness, let him remain at the doorstep of worship. Is it as simple as that? Yes, ya akhi, Allah has made it as simple as that. Did he not say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Taha, whoever follows my way, this person will not go astray, nor will they be distressed. But whoever turns away from my remembrance, that person will have a miserable life. And such a person will stand on the day of judgment blind without vision. Allah made it that simple. When he said in Surah An-Nahl, whoever does good deeds, here are the conditions. Whoever works good deeds all of the time, male or female whilst having belief faith in Allah these are the two conditions what is the outcome what is the promise Allah says we're going to give them a sweet and pleasant happy life Allahu Akbar this dear brothers and sisters is where happiness is found and thus we can say in summary that one of us may take every tablet on the shelf and we may turn our attention to every medicine that is being offered by doctors we may knock every door and read every theory and insert every syringe into our fatigued bodies. We will not find happiness and peace of mind except in the place where the creator of happiness Allah has taught us to find it. That is because it is Allah who makes people laugh and it is Allah who makes them cry. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are happy. We are happy that we are Muslims. We are happy that Allah is our Lord. We are happy that He has chosen us to know Him. We could not have known Him if it wasn't for His favor. We are happy that we haven't been left in the dark and Allah has given us the Quran to govern our lives. We are happy that Jannah has been created for us. We are happy. We are happy that we as Muslims will be the majority of the people of Jannah. We are happy that although we are the last nation to walk the earth from 70, we will be the first on the day of judgment. 
to be held accountable and to be put out of the miseries of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. By Allah, we are happy. Happy with Allah as our Lord and happy with Islam as our religion and happy with Muhammad Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our messenger. By Allah, we are happy. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make you and I and our mothers and fathers and the rest of the Muslim community happy in this world, happy in their grave, happy on the day of judgment, happy when they meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala.